We are starting this Friday edition of the Sports Mag Zone with badminton. In a bid to energize the local scene, the Jamaica Badminton Academy will be hosting the 2024 edition of Shuttle Showdown over two weekends in September. Set to take place September 14 to 15 and September 21 to 22, the tournament welcomes both junior and senior players aged 4 to 35 years of age. With us to tell us even more about the tournament is event coordinator Brianna Burke. Brianna, welcome to the Sports Mac Zone. Not often that we yeah. talk badminton <laughs> on the Sports Mac Zone. We are happy to help to, the, to you know, sensitize the, the viewers about the sport. Um, talk to us about this shuttle tournament and how exciting it is for the Badminton Association. So this is Jamaica Badminton Academy's first official tournament. It will feature many events. So we have kids playing, as you said before, from ages four right through to 35. We also have divisional tournament, divisional aspects of the tournament where you play within your level. So if you're a beginner, you play in D. If you're more intimate, intermediate, you play C and then more advanced is A and B. So this tournament is good for the development of the sport overall. You know, we have persons playing from all 14 county, country, uh, parishes, parishes in for Jamaica. Uh -huh. So, you know, we all come to YMCA and we play. So all of the matches will be played at the at YMCA, YMCA courts. I didn't recognize that badminton had players in all 14 parishes. All 14. So, you know, they'll come in on a Friday evening and spend the weekend, play throughout Saturday, play throughout Sunday, and then head back. Yeah, I know that there was a point at which I think in Manchester there was a pretty vibrant badminton core there. But are there badminton courts in every single parish in the no. country? No. Okay. So we actually just, some parishes, you know, they're just using halls. For example, in, example, in Montego Bay, they do have an active playing. They have a club down there that plays actively. Yes. They don't have a hall, but they do find space to yeah. play and just have fun. Yeah, I, I understand that. Um, from ages 4 to 35, which means that if I wanted to play, I couldn't play. But, but Ricardo could because he's on the Unfortunately not for 35. this tournament, but we do usually have a Masters <laughs> category. <laughs> you see, Lance, you're not left out. Uh, so, for this tournament, I Not am. this specific tournament, but we do usually you know, have the Masters. Where I'm you just have teasing, Brianna. Don't, no, don't, wor don't yeah, worry about you it. You should know. Ricardo so, looks as if he has a question. <laughs> sure, go ahead. <laughs> no, I just want to learn a little bit more about the Jamaica Badminton Academy. Tell us a little bit more about the organization and what exactly you do. Okay, so there is a bridge and a gap between, you know, our most experienced players and then our beginners. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no body to fill that gap in between. So the idea of this club and, you know, Jamaica Badminton Academy is to bridge that gap. So we start you as young as you can hold a racket. And, you know, once you have good hand-eye coordination, we invite you to come, you know, even if it's just to play with your friends, you know, no formal training, but just, you know, to have fun so that, you know, you can be nurtured throughout the sport when it's time for you to play professionally. So it's the beginner's club? Everybody, actually. So we do have beginners, but like our coaches are national representatives. Mm -hmm. So they will represent the club on the national, you know, level, go to international tournaments, as well as you have the coaches and then you have the beginner players. So yeah. everybody is involved. I couldn't help but notice the Jamaica Badminton Academy is JBA. The Jamaica Badminton Association, Association. is also JBA. Um, and I can see how individuals could get confused quite easily, um, especially with you putting on an initiative like, like this one. Um, do you often get individuals being a little bit confused, separating the JBA um, <laughs> Association from, from JBA Academy. Academy? Yes, it does happen. And what we try to do is actually use the full name. So yeah. it's Jamaica Badminton Academy and then Jamaica mm -hmm. Badminton Association and not stick to the acronyms as it does, it does confuse everybody. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you, this tournament will happen over two weekends. Correct. Um, talk to us about the, the specific reason or reasons for that rather than just having it three days, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we're done and we all get to go home, as opposed to those all the way from Montego Bay and Westmoreland um, having to come in one weekend, you advance, and then you're back the next weekend. So badminton is a very high intensity sport. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we do have players, for example, or junior players who are playing in their age group, but also in a divisional. So we try to space it out so they can play in their age group, medal, win in their age group, and then as well get an opportunity to play in their division. So with that two weekend space, they'll be able to play as many events as they want to, you know, and still play at their optimal. Yeah. Based on what you do, I, I mean, how many clubs across the country 
um, operate similarly in terms of what they offer, if any at all? So to be honest, uh, Jamaica Badminton Academy is a pioneer in this field right now. I mean, back in the days, you know, you had clubs from beginners right through to, you know, advanced senior players. However, with the, the break, you mm -hmm. know, especially with COVID, a lot of persons stopped playing and stuff. So clubs are on the rise, you know, seeking and scouting out their beginners, seeking and scouting out their seniors mm -hmm. to kind of build their club itself. So, you know, we can be competitive at local tournaments. Yeah. And what sort of synergy is there now with the JBA, this time the association? Um, the synergy is good. Um, you know, the idea is the core value and the mission of badminton, you know, whether it's Jamaica Badminton or another club, is allowing everybody to play. So the fact that that's the academy now is allowing play, you know, we're facilitating play, the association welcomes it yeah. and, you know, sanctions it to yeah. ensure that play can happen throughout the year. Yeah, yeah. Brianna, at the risk of, well, I've already aged myself a few minutes ago, but I remember in the 1980s when you had players like Tommy Lee and George Hugh and Robert Richards, the Leo sisters, um, Debbie O'Connor, who represented Trinidad and Tobago, badminton appeared at that time to be more vibrant, had a more had more presence on the on the sporting landscape, not only in Jamaica but throughout the Caribbean. I'm not sure I'm correct with that. It's just a, a perception that I have. How does the badminton fraternity feel about the sport currently in 2024? So currently, there is a little rift in terms of, you know, there was no play at all for two years, two and a half years with COVID. You know, a lot of persons put down their rackets, you know, haven't been playing. So since the new association took office in 2023, October, I believe, the, the synergy and the energy is different. We see it changing. We see older players coming back now, entering tournaments, you know, mentoring young athletes. So it's coming, and hopefully by next year, you know, we can have a different conversation, but it's coming. Yeah. yeah. Well, Ricardo plays tennis. I, I played a little tennis, a little table tennis, and a little badminton as well. And I must say that if I was going to be attached to one of those sport, it w sports, it would have been badminton. There's something about badminton that just feels really attractive to me playing it, mm -hmm. even more so, so than table tennis or, or, or lawn tennis. But I, with I, tennis, we're not we outside, uh, not in the sun. <laughs> <laughs> but I saw some impressive um, badminton at the Olympics in yes. Paris, which was live on Sportsmax. Those Chinese players are amazing. They are. <laughs> What are, what, 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 what are the prospects of, because this is a Caribbean show, I know Jamaica and Trinidad and Tobago have been over the years the more dominant teams in, in badminton. Um, how are the prospects for Caribbean players to, do they still have the Pan Am Badminton Championship? Yes, they do. Okay. So we hosted the junior championship. Oh, yeah, we did. About two years year, ago. Yeah, last year, 2023, yeah. 2023, yes. Yeah. Earlier in the year. Yeah. I want to ask, though, if there are potential players who could rise to, you know, strong positions in this hemisphere, in the Pan American region, because that is the stepping stone to the global level i Correct. mean of course you have to start dominating regionally and then in the in the hemisphere before you can you know start to play competitively on the global scene but is the talent that you're seeing enough to suggest that in four or five years we could see players rising to these regional levels yes actually so we did have two athletes samuel ricketts and tally richardson who were on the Olympic pathway. Missed out by a little, so we missed it. Well, they missed it <laughs> this year. However, you know, they're still on the hunt um, for the next four years. They will be rallying to ensure that what they do Catherine make it. What about Catherine Winter? Winter, does she still play? So she hasn't been playing on the international circuit, mm -hmm. but she does play locally and she also coaches with us at Jamaica Badminton Academy. So that's what we see a lot of, you know, senior players giving back through coaching and just mentoring or junior athletes yeah I remember a few years ago um, and I see a few it might be a little bit more than that that badminton had an inner city program and I thought it was a pretty successful program as well that on earth a lot of talent I remember a high school like Haile Selassie, Selassie yes um, who before then wasn't really known for anything in sport. Of, of course, since then, they've done very well in the, in the Manning Cup schoolboy football competition. But 
that program I thought was so good. I mean, can you tell us what has happened to that program? And if there are any similar programs to really help with the development of the sport in the country? So, yeah, so the program, again, COVID, you know, kind of put that program on hold, mm. as well as the coaches that were pioneering that program are no longer in badminton. So, you know, we, the association, Jamaica Badminton Association, has decided to take back on that as a actionable item. Yeah. So by next year, 2025, you know, that program will be active again. We'll be seeing players coming out because we, as you rightly said, we yeah. do have players who have made it very far on the international circuit yeah. from STEM coming out of that program. Mm. Yeah. All right, well, Brianna, we wish you the best of luck for this tournament. Two weekends in September at the YMCA courts. Hi. And um, I'm, I'm hoping that it is a successful program for all the players involved. And I hope it serves the mandate of your academy in unearthing talent and developing talent and giving aspirations to, to players to lift their standards. Really great talking to you, Brianna. And by the way, you can still enter if you're over 35, right? Not this specific <laughs> tournament, but we'll have it just for you. <laughs> just for you. So I'll give you a call Lads, for our next tournament. Just for you. Just for you. <laughs> All right, Brianna. Well, I, I don't think I'm that competitive in badminton, but I, I, I like the sport. It really is a, a fabulous sport, badminton. Brianna Burke, thanks for talking to us here on the Sports Mic Zone. We still have a lot more to come on the show, and we'll be back on the other side of the break.